Glad to be here uh, to talk about salt. Uh, I'll make some introduction to what it is and what you can use it for. Um, so salt is a primary a remote execution framework, which means it's a tool that lets you uh, execute code on, for, from one machine on a lot of others, or just one other, depending on what you want to do. Um, and it's a set of tools that are built uh, around that framework. So one of those tools, which is quite important, is uh, config management. Uh, but you can also use it to do provisioning, to do monitoring, that kind of stuff. Uh, so who here is using config management? <laughs> so the majority of you. Um, uh, what tools are you using? Maybe you, you're using Puppet? Yeah. Or Chef? Uh, or Salt? Well, it's installed somewhere, and sometimes you run stuff with it. <laughs> um, I see that Tolef is using everything. Not Ansible. Well, I'm not using Ansible. I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, including Salt, I'm sure. I mean, they all have lots of good things and lots of drawbacks. Um, so why would you use Salt? Uh, first, it's write, written in Python, so if you're a Python shop like Logilab is, then that's a pretty interesting point, because it means you can hack it without having to learn yet another language. Um, it uses YAML for describing the states and the, the stuff that you uh, I mean, most of the data that is built on is, is using YAML, at least by default. Uh, so it's not uh, a DSL uh, like uh, Chef or Puppet are using. It's some reasonably standard uh, language. Um, it has a lot of documentation. It has quite a big uh, user community and also contributors. Um, it's moving quite fast. There's a lot of development activity going on. Um, yeah. So there are also reasons not to use it. One of them is that it's written in Python, so if you don't like that, then you're probably better off with something else. Um, it's also a young project, uh, so I mean, getting more uh, mature, but that the fact that it's still fast moving means there's a lot of stuff going in. Some of it uh, is stable and mature, and some of it less so. Uh, so you have to keep up with the, with the development. Uh, and one of the Controversial aspects is that it doesn't use something like SSH uh, to, uh, for the communication between the machines. Um, it has its own protocol based on uh, 0MQ and does its own, its own crypto and authentication on top of that. Yes, Martin. Hello. Just wanted to add one thing. Uh, it also rolls its own Python module loader. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Um, and one other reason not to use it is if you're uh, very happy with your current uh, config management, which pro you probably aren't because, like, Tolev said, they're all terrible. Um, so we, before we go into the details, I will have to talk a bit about terminology, because 
obviously, since it's yet another config management system, it has its own terminology. Um, so usually you have one master, which is the machine that has all uh, that controls all, all of your other systems, uh, and those other systems are called minions. Um, so yeah, usually you have only one master and one to thousand of million of minions. Yeah, you can also uh, have a more complicated topology uh, if you need that. Um, so the way that works on the network level is that the minions open a connection to the to the master, so you don't have to open any uh, new ports on the on the minions. Um, and then they wait for uh, stuff to do, and then when they execute stuff, uh, they return the results back to the master um, asynchronously, so you can run a command on 1,000 minions and you don't have, you, you get the results uh, back as they come in. Um, another word that uh, is needed is the grain of salt. It's uh, uh, static data that is uh, on, the, on each minion. So for example, uh, this no, it's here. Okay. Put your hey, gnome. Put that here. No, it doesn't want to. Fuck. Uh, no, it doesn't. Whatever. Uh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, the still, still. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Any day now. Yay. Uh, so I have two minions. Uh, they all they are both uh, responding, and one of them is my laptop, so it's both a master and minion, and the other is a VM. Um, and I can ask uh, the VM to tell me what its grains are and its stuff like uh, which version of salt is running, uh, uh, which kind of machine is it, whether it's physical or it's a VM, and uh, it's running Debian Wizzy, etc. So you know a bunch of stuff about the minion, its IP addresses, its uh, architecture, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, some other data that you have uh, is the pillars. Uh, the pillars are data that, uh, contrary to the to the grains, are present on the master, and that apply uh, differently to each minion. So each minion has its own pillar that are given to it by the master, uh, and then. 
on the config management uh, side, you have states, which are uh, descriptions of uh, what you want to do or what state you want the minion to be in. Uh, you have a top file which, is, which describes which states apply to which minion or which pillars apply to which minion. That's another top file for the pillars. And there's the notion of a high state which is uh, go and apply all my states to this minion or to these minions. Uh, so it's some kind of take all my description of, of states and go run that and wait a while and see that it's all done. Um, so normally the high state should be idempotent. So if you run it twice, the second time should just say, oh, I'm already in the right state and there's nothing to do. Uh, so how can you add a minion? You install the salt minion package. Uh, it's present in Wizzy Backpost, uh, but there are probably newer versions on the saltstack.com uh, servers, which are maintained by the same guy who is doing the Debian package, so should be pretty much uh, okay. Uh, they also have some shell script that you can uh, curl and pipe sudo bash and, you know, let's not talk about that. Um, then once you have installed the minion, uh, you need to tell it where the master is. Uh, by default, it looks for salt. And then you start the minion and it will go try to connect to the master, uh, but since the master doesn't know about it, you need to uh, check that the public key that it sends to, math to the master is the right one, and then once you accept that public key, uh, you're good to go. So what kind of stuff can, you, can we run? we can run some ping, which is, is the minion running and responding and is the communication with the master uh, okay? You can run any arbitrary shell command uh, or Python code or whatever else. Uh, and one imp pretty important thing is that you don't have to uh, run a command on every minion. You can run. Uh, you can use either uh, shell globbing or uh, uh, regex or filter by grain or by pillars to the no to say I want to run this command only on this set of uh, of uh, minions. So, for example, here I run the uh, grains.item kernel release uh, command only on my minions who are running Jesse. So in my two minions, one is running Wizzy, one is running Jesse, and we'll see that uh, what, I mean, the master will see that it only applies to one of them. There's a number of other uh, functions like this that you can run, uh, either to uh, I don't know, install packages, uh, create users, create uh, databases, uh, or just get information. I mean, some of them do stuff on the minion, some of them just read, read information. There's a mixture of things, and you can write your own because these are just uh, Python functions. So you, you can add some more uh, functions there, and they will be synced from the master to the minion, and you can run them uh, just as if they were uh, built into salt.
So on the config management part, uh, by default, uh, you will describe the state that you want on uh, using YAML. Um, and you can use Jinja for templating. So that means you can have variables, either based on grains or uh, other things that you can run on the, or, or any actual, actually any salt function that you can run on the minions. Or you can have loops, you can have conditionals, and it gives a lot of power, uh, which comes with some complexity, but there's a balance here. Um, and so the grains and pillars that I talked about, they are available both for targeting which state should I apply to which minion, and also uh, they are available inside Jinja for the templating. So either for templating the uh, state files or uh, even other files that you want to, to push to the minions. For example, if I want to push some uh, Apache config file, uh, I may have some differences between the minions, and I will use the same template, and uh, the minion will do the work of uh, replacing the template stuff with uh, the right values. So how do I uh, target my minions? Uh, so I have this top file which says, okay, my common state applies to everyone, and my Apache state applies to uh, the minions whose role is uh, web server. So what does my uh, uh, common state do? It says, I need to install the Vim, Less, and Debsums package, packages. Uh, I may want to tem template that to say oh, the Debsum package only uh, applies to the Debian hosts and not to the Red Hat ones, uh, since there is a, uh, a grain that tells me whether some machine is Windows or Red Hat. Uh, Debian based, I can do that. I can do that either here in the state in the SLS file or uh, using different uh, SLS files and targeting uh, in the top file. So I can have some more complicated SLS files. Uh, assuming that I have uh, uh, for every machine which is a web server, I tell it, okay, you are serving this and this and this vhost. Uh, I can access this data in, the, in my SLS file and say, okay, uh, I have the Ap Apache 2 package installed and it's also, I also make sure that the Apache 2 service is running and that um, is restarted whenever I changed uh, one of these vhost files. So this is incomplete because I need to uh, define uh, what this file contains, but uh, it, this kind of idea of replacing some uh, template with, uh, with the data, and uh, since the master uh, can serve at the file server, I can have the template on the master and say, okay, and, and tell the minion, okay, you will get the, the template from here and replace uh, the variables in it. Uh, so some other nice things that SALT uh, provides is integration with cloud or virtualization APIs. Uh, so it can talk to uh, OpenStack and other uh, stuff like that. You need to uh, give it some uh, credentials and it will know where to find uh, stuff, it will, which will allow you to provision your VMs 
and actually it will uh, pre-generate the minion's key, um, pre-accept it on the, on the master, and then when the VM goes up, it will be it will be able to already uh, run a high state, for example, and be in the right uh, uh, with the right configuration. Uh, it can also talk to uh, libvirt with a. Uh. So here it knows about uh, the libvirt that is running on uh, on my laptop, and it knows that there is uh, one running VM and a bunch of uh, shutdown ones. It can uh, create new VMs from a template from an, an image. Uh, it can and it can manage these ones. And so these wz one minions that uh, showed up in the test that pinged uh, earlier, uh, it's one of these hosts that can be uh, managed with Solvirt. I can get documentation on any salt module or, uh, or function with this uh, dash D option, so for example, if I want to see some info about my wizzy one VM, uh, then, yeah, if I tell it which VM, it will be better here. Okay. okay, so it tells me about its network address, its graphics, its disks, and stuff like that, which I could, uh, uh, get through libvirt directly, but uh, Salt gives a unified way and, and a programmatic way to, to work with this. Um, uh, one thing that uh, one can use this with is uh, uh, you can uh, write uh, your own returners, which are what does the minion, what should the minion do with the data. Uh, so by default, it returns it to me to the master, but I could uh, have some application that that needs the uh, this kind of data inside a database uh, or stuff like that for monitoring for uh, managing uh, my VMs. Uh, so this is also an API that is provided by, by Salt. So I guess that's all I have for this overview, and now if you have any questions. Thank you. Um, you said that SALT is a young and fast-moving project. Yeah. Um, you gave us some points that might want to make you consider strongly whether you want to use salt, um, including that own crypto stuff. If you, you've been involved in the project for a long time, and uh, I would be interested to hear your opinion on whether these core design issues that you're talking about, crypto, the Python module loader, and some other things, um, whether you think they're going to get resolved, because they're old issues. Yeah. 
So there's a way to use salt or SSH instead of using the the default uh, uh, protocol, uh, but apparently it's, it's uh, very slow. It's not quite as scalable because that's really the core of their own protocol is that you really can scale to thousands of minions and they can, I mean, they open their connection to the master when they need to and it just works, uh, which is probably not the case with Salt SSH. And so I'm not sure, I mean, they know about these issues. It doesn't seem to be a priority to... That, that, that's really my question. Yeah. You've been in the project longer than I have. And um, what's your feeling, you know? I mean, it's, it's not a priority. They are happy with their M2 crypto self-cooked thing. I don't, I don't know if they're not happy with it, but they... But care, it's, I mean, it's not a priority to... It's not to a priority. Yeah. So, given that, do you think that it makes sense to use salt? I think there's enough people using it now that that's going to be, or there has been review of their protocol uh, by, I mean, I hope that, <laughs> they are, they are, I mean, they have, there have been some reviews of SALT, there have been some CVs, uh, but, you know, the Crypto stuff, I don't know if it's, I mean, how much it's, it has seen, how much review it has seen. Hello. Um, I was wondering, like, is there a specific reason that you selected SALT instead of, say, Ansible, which seems to be very similar, but um, has some, that does not have some of the downsides you mentioned? I heard Martin talk about Ansible, and it wasn't so, very so positive. Martin doesn't like Ansible. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, the, I mean, the Ansible project is a, basically a one-man show, from a, what I understand. Which. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't want to hijack anything, but um, yeah, no, Ansible is, no is well funded. It's it's a it's a real company. I mean, there are plenty of people working on it. It's not like it's a it's a one man show. It's, okay. Um, it's I don't know. It's it's a I I started or I am involved in maintaining it in Debian. This is why I'm, you know, kind of plugging it here. Yeah, I don't. I started using Salt. I think two years ago, something like that, and. Okay. So yeah, I, I am also wondering like what which to use, whether to be Salt or Ansible. But but besides that, I'm also wondering if um, if the management for virtualization uh, crosses over from KVM or you know to to other yeah, to other uh, virtualization uh, technologies. I know there are uh, there are some integration with uh, stuff like Vagrant and Docker. I'm not using those, so I'm not very familiar with them, but I know that exists, and people use Salt to manage their you know, Docker instances and stuff like that. If you're, if you're wondering what you should use, I'm going to give a lightning talk tomorrow about configuration management. Cool. Nice. Hello. Um, one of the problems I see with basically all the automation solutions today um, that include, include a central component is that if you manage to own that central component, you can basically do anything to all the hosts. Uh, does Salt have any way of protecting you against that by using like signed uh, YAML files or similar solution? Not as far as I know. The 
some degree, that's a... Sorry? To some degree, it's a difficult problem to solve just because um, even if you have the program check signed YAML files, if someone has root on your master system, then you're pretty screwed anyway because they can just modify the program to not read the signature. Um, there are some techniques of dealing with it, SSH keys, for example, you could simply use agent forwarding and not have the SSH key local to the central machine. Um, but there's going to be, it's going to be hard to get around the fact as long as you have a centralized host. I mean, you could run Ansible in a decentralized way, like you don't have to have a traditional master node. Um, say again? Uh, speaking of decentralized uh, management, can you describe a workflow with Salt that you would use for, you know, maybe a single node or multi nodes without a master? Is that possible? Uh, can you repeat that? I'm not sure I understand yeah. the question. My, my question was essentially, how would you use Salt in a decentralized environment? Could you use it without a master, or is it explicitly required? Uh, no, you can use it without a master. You can run comments on the. Uh, on the minions itself, on the minion itself, with without a master, so you ha you can stay. If if you have just one node, it, if you have a minion on it, you can give it some SLS files, all stuff like that, and tell it, okay, uh, go and and, uh, and run that. Uh, you don't even um, need the minion to do that. There's salt call. And yeah, it salt just call. goes through Python and then ed executes the. Um, recipes and the um, the thing about signing uh, your recipes and making you asked about that um, and making sure that you have some sort of like uh, you know controlled state and um, the way to do all of this whether it's a centralized or decentralized version is to use git actually um, so salt can pull directly out of git and has that built in and just ha gets the stuff straight from a tag for instance and that's also how you would do decentralized so you would push all the the git um, repositories to your um, to your um, minions, or they would synchronize with each other, and then they would simply just with cron call on that data set, um, call themselves. Well, you, then you still have the problem of if someone gets into your Git repo and puts stuff in it, then. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they can run any code if they want on all your machines. So. That's one issue, and uh, another one issue, uh, I don't use salt at the moment, but um, I was planning to use, to say something like, I push um, description file to the to the minions. Uh, then the problem is you probably are going to push a lot of information on all your hosts, uh, and it could be an issue. You, you may disclose a lot of information on those hosts. I mean, you can put all the uh, uh, like the secret stuff or all the restricted stuff you can put it in the pillars and then it's only sent to the minions that are listed for that form. Uh, all the states uh, can be read and, and all the files can be read by the by all minions, but the pillars are only available to the minions that are targeted. Hi. Um, uh, supposing I wanted to adopt, um, you know, configuration management throughout an enterprise with Salt. Um, what should I put into Salt? Should I put every bit of configuration uh, for every application, even if it's just a single instance, or are there some, are there some things I would want to uh, configure outside of the SALT system? I would tend to put as much as possible in, into SALT because it makes it much easier to replicate the setup elsewhere if you know you need 
a second host or if your machine dies or stuff like that. It's, it, it removes a lot of the pain of setting up uh, a new machine. I mean, when you start using it, you put things like one by one from the local config into the config management, but uh, because you're not starting from scratch, uh, but I think it makes sense to put as much as possible in the in the config management tool. Yeah, to, to answer that question, I would really ask the question, do you ever, ever think you might reasonably want to have a staging and or development environment with these things in? Yeah. If, the, if the answer to that is no, then maybe you're okay with just having a backup of that host, but in general, just put everything in. It's just less work. Does Salt have any uh, ability to, to run with a multiple master configuration, either for, like, say, horizontal scaling of the master in case you have a huge number of minions, or for like a high availability sort of uh, configuration? Martin says yes. I'm not familiar with this because I've never needed it with like our setup, but. There's, um, I don't know what it's called, but one of the um, tools is just simply a bouncer. So you, could, you, you would set it up central host and then you would bounce it to like 15 and they would then control 20,000 minions each or something. I think we are uh, out of time. So thank you very much everyone for coming and have a nice day.